in this session let us deal with decimal fixed point representation let us see how does it work but before that let me give you a glimpse of what happened in the previous sessions to have a connectivity so far we discussed about the complement number systems by using the complement number systems how we are going to perform arithmetic subtractions there are two kinds of a complements as you can see r's complement and r minus 1's complement when it comes to the binary it is 2's or 1's complement but when it comes to the decimal it is 10's or 9's complement r minus 1's complement can be obtained by using a formula that is r power n minus 1 minus n where r is the radix n is the total number of digits minus 1 is of course it's a digit minus n is the actual value is a given number Finally, when we perform, we are going to obtain its corresponding r minus one's complement. Similarly, when you want to perform, when you want to you know calculate r's complement of a number, simply you can take r minus one's complement and you can add plus one to it, which becomes r's complement. So here, when you perform two's complement, one's complement plus one will be the two's complement. One's complement can easily be obtained by simply reversing it. by simply reversing each and every digit after which if we are able to add one to it we will be able to get to complement these are essentially needed to perform subtraction because when you want to perform subtraction the two's complement of uh, a binary number to be taken and that must be added to another number which gives you a minus b a is here the main and b is the subtraction subtraction two's complement must be taken should be added to the main and which is a any end carry you need to discard because end carry will not be a part of the result and if there is no end carry even if you perform all the operation and still if you are unable to get the end carry that means that b is greater than a right in that case what you do what you need to do is again you need to convert the result into its two's complement then you are going to get the value the desired value so now what is the fixed point representation whenever there is a binary point let us say there is a binary point the binary point cannot be represented right because all the digits must be represented within a processor's register but whenever you have a binary point in a specific value there are two portions needed to be represented one is before the binary point and one more is after the binary point let us say 1101 which shows the fraction part 1011 which shows the actual integer part and there are two registers that actually used to accommodate before the value and after the value I mean the the value which is before the binary point the value which is after the binary point okay so this value can be called as an integer and this value can be called as a fraction part this is how fixed point representation works okay so fixed point the binary point is always fixed fixed at one position as it is uh, shown here a binary point to the extreme left of the register this is a fraction point that is uh, this binary point is the extreme left to a register then this register value is a fraction point the binary point is the extreme right to a uh, right to a register which makes the value within the register is an integer part right then uh, the binary point is not actually present but the number stored in the register is treated as a fraction or an or as an integer here in the computer system only these two registers are present and the values inside it but not the binary point binary point there is no accommodation for this binary point anywhere only these two registers this register called as a f register this register is called as an i register only these two values and the registers are present within the computer system and a binary point is imagined to be in between those these two registers yeah now um floating point i'll come to this uh, part later let us integer uh, let us talk about integer representation i already you know discussed about this signed magnitude signed ones complement signed twos complement what is signed magnitude signed magnitude representation requires a, an msb should be the sign if the msb is equal to 0 that is a positive sign if the msb is equal to 1 that stands that the value is a negative value okay arithmetic addition when you perform arithmetic addition of course the rules are very simple for addition not actually you know we don't need to 
discuss anything else but when it comes to the subtraction there is a problem subtraction must be again in another form of an addition that is a plus 2's complement of b that is b's complement plus 1 1's complement uh, is b's complement plus 1 it will be equal to a minus b when we discard the n cap this is how subtraction is going to get performed we need to discard the end carry okay we already discussed about overflow what is an overflow sometimes the result of a plus b might be more than the number of digits of a register right at that time the result can be accommodated you know the carry can be accommodated in an extended bit which is provided to a register within the computer system this extended digit may not be a problem because carry is always a carry and it is expected all the time but sign reversal is a problem as we discussed a short while ago right so in order to avoid the sign reversal what we do is we will have to detect the overflow this sign reversal is called the overflow okay what is the overflow sign reversal just have a glance of my previous session For understanding what is an overflow, what is an overflow? When you add two four-digit numbers, four-digit plus four-digit, may result a five-digit value. At that time, the additional digit can be called as a carry. But this carry becomes an overflow whenever there is a sign reversal. The let us say these two are positive integers. when you add two positive integers definitely the result also will be a positive integer but as i shown you in one of the cases two positive integers due to the carry and overflow may result a negative value may produce a negative value which is a serious problem for the computer system so at that time we need to take the necessary steps to have a correct sign in the place of a reverse sign for that we need to observe and we need to detect the overflow overflow can be detected by using an xr gate okay carry in to the sign digit carry out from the sign digit will be connected to the xr gate if the xr gate output is equal to 1 then we are in a situation called overflow otherwise if it is equal to 0 there is no overflow at all okay in the fixed point representation i told you that you know uh, detection by observing the carry into the sign bit uh, position and the carry out of the sign bit position so when we connect to the xr gate we are going to get the situation of overflow when xr gate produces a one okay now let us talk about decimal fixed point representation how a decimal number is going to be represented within the computer system you know that a decimal number is going to be represented a decimal value is going to be represented within the cpu in a bcd code all right so what we need to do is in order to represent four decimal numbers let us say 4167 for each number we do require a four bit register right so in order to represent four digits of uh, decimal we do require a 16 bit register in which least significant four digits is going to represent one uh, decimal digit next to subsequent four digits is going to represent next uh, decimal digit followed by next to four followed by next to four so here this is how we are going to represent a fixed point bc now i just have to see how cumbersome it is using a bcd within the computer system let us say 4167.4127 here still we need to take two different registers but the register size will be equal to 16 and 16 because every decimal has an equivalent corresponding four bit bcd code so in order to represent a decimal value which has a decimal point in between which has a fraction part and an integer part then the representation takes a lot of space within the computer system because each and every digit of decimal requires four bit of a bcd so here the representation will be tight sir this is otherwise it will be as simple as binary fixed point representation anyhow this is assume 
decimal point is asia this is the fraction part and this is the integer part but here the problem is size of a register size of a fraction register now should be equal to 16 bits size of an integer register must be equal to 16 more bits okay now you can understand what if the number has more digits obviously the length of the registers will also be increased right so this is the reason why bcd would be you know quite difficult to implement in a computer system but anyhow some designers would always go for bcd because representation will be simpler representation will be you know easier rather because all the time in the real world we are just going to use the decimal number system simply representing a bcd and obtaining a bcd number from a decimal digit is far more easier than converting a binary number sorry a decimal number into the binary number this is how it actually works the represent as you can clearly see the final point the representation in decimal is wasting a considerable amount of storage space and the circuits required to perform decimal arithmetic are more complex this is the problem of this is rather you know this is one of the major problems in implementing bcd in a computer system yeah thank you